In this problem, we're analyzing a simple pendulum that goes all the way through a vertical loop. So we're given the length of the string for the pendulum, the mass of the pendulum bob, and the speed at the bottom of the trajectory. And we're going to answer several questions about this thing. In the first part, we get the tension in the string as the pendulum passes through its lowest point. In the second part, we use energy conservation to get the speed of the pendulum bob at the top of its trajectory. And then finally, we get the tension in the string as the pendulum passes through its highest point. So to get the tension as the pendulum passes through its lowest point, we're going to start with a force diagram down there. So there are two forces acting on this pendulum bob. We have gravity pulling straight down with a magnitude of mg, and then we have the tension in the string pulling up with a magnitude of T sub b. Note that I drew the upward force as being larger than mg. I know this must be the case because I have a net force pointing to the center of curvature, and that must be true because to move in a circular path, the acceleration must be pointing to the center. So we apply Newton's second law to the pendulum bob at this lowest point. So that's F net equals ma. And we're going to call the actual direction of acceleration the positive direction. Well, that happens to be upward because upward points to the center of curvature. So our net force is going to be TB, that upward tension of the string, minus mg. And this is equal to the mass of the pendulum bob times its acceleration. Well, it's moving on a circular path, and we can say the acceleration is v squared over r. That's the centripetal acceleration of the pendulum bob. So we can solve for the tension symbolically, and I'm going to move that weight term to the right-hand side and factor out an m while I'm at it. So I end up with Tb equals m times the quantity g plus v squared over r. And now we can just sub in our numbers and find the tension. So the mass was given to us as 105 grams, and that needs to be converted to kilograms as 0 0.105. For g, we're using the approximation 9.8. And then we were given the speed at the bottom, 7.39, and we need to square that. And then we divide by the length of the string, which was 0.94. And when we run the numbers on this to three significant digits, we get 7.13 newtons for the tension in the string. Now in part B, we want to find the speed of this pendulum bob when we get to the top of the trajectory. And the key concept here is that energy is conserved as this thing goes from the bottom of the trajectory with its highest speed up to the top of the trajectory where we have the greatest gravitational potential energy and the lowest speed. So we're going to start from the beginning and just say E initial is equal to E final, where the initial location is the bottom and the final location is the top. So at the bottom, just keeping things symbolically again, we have one half m v bottom squared for the kinetic energy of the pendulum bob. And I'm going to put the origin for the y coordinate at this lowest location. So the gravitational potential energy is going to be zero at the bottom of the trajectory. At the top of the trajectory, we still have some kinetic energy. That's one half m v top squared, but we also have gravitational potential energy. So that's given by m g times the y coordinate. Well, symbolically, the y coordinate here is twice the length of the string. So that's a 2L. We can cancel the masses out of this. And just to clean things up, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And this gives me VB squared is equal to VT squared plus 4 times GL. So we can solve for the speed at the top of the trajectory. We just subtract 4GL from both sides and then square root the result. So now subbing in the numbers, I have 7.39 squared minus 4 times 9.8 times the length of our string, which was 0.94. And when we run the numbers on this to three significant digits, we get 4.21 meters per second. Finally, we're going to get the tension in the string at the top of this trajectory. And this starts with a force diagram for the pendulum bob when it's all the way at the top. So the force of gravity has the same magnitude in the same direction. It's always pulling down with a magnitude of mg. And then our tension is pulling straight down because strings can only pull. And this means the tension and the force of gravity are now cooperating to give us the net force pointing to the center of curvature. Now again, I'm going to analyze this with toward the center being my positive direction. So I just have two positive forces resulting in a positive center pointing acceleration. And we start with Newton's second law, F net equals MA. And this time our forces are both in the positive direction. So I have the tension at the top of the trajectory plus MG 
giving me the mass times the acceleration, which is going to be V squared over R, where that V is now the speed at the top of the trajectory. So we're going to solve for the tension symbolically, and I get the tension at the top, again, factoring an M out as I go, is given by M times the quantity V squared over R minus G. And we sub in our numbers, Again, the mass of that pendulum bob has to be converted to kilograms, so 0 0.105. And then the speed at the top, we found that using energy conservation. So we have 4.21 squared over the radius of curvature, which is 0.94, minus our approximate acceleration of gravity of 9.8. And when we run the numbers on this to three significant digits, we get 0 0.951 newtons. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, Check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.